Hi everyone, Lieutenant Tammy here from the spokesperson unit here with another operational update. Uh, today is day 26 of the war between Hamas and Israel. Uh, the war started on October 7th, 26 days ago, uh, Saturday, when Hamas massacred 1,500 innocent civilians and Israelis uh, and foreign nationals. They brutally massacred children, women, elderly, mutilated their bodies. Um, the reason why the number is 1,500 is because we still have bodies that were mutilated beyond recognition and we are unable to identify the, these bodies at the moment. Um, we have very advanced technological teams that are working in order to identify the bodies and try and see uh, if we can ki give closures uh, to the families of those who lost, love lost uh, loved ones, those who not, do not know where the loved ones are. Um, so I want to talk to you about a couple of things that happened in recent days uh, in Israel. Obviously, you're more than welcome to send us questions while I'm speaking. I'll be more than happy to answer as much questions as possible. So I want to talk about the Shifa Hospital, Al Shifa Hospital. It's the biggest hospital in Gaza City. It's the biggest hospital in Gaza. Um, it, they treat about 1,500 patients and they have 4,000 medical staff. Um, it's a very advanced hospital. It just has one big, big problem. Hamas are using the Shifa hospital uh, as a headquarters for their military and terrorist operations. So how the hospital is built is that you have the hospital itself, and then you have terrorist tunnels that are going underneath the entire hospital. These terrorist tunnels have entries within the departments of the hospital itself. So let's say in the emergency room, uh, one door leaves, leads to a patient's room or an OR, and the other room uh, leads to an entry point to a Hamas terrorist tunnel. So these terrorist tunnels are being used by the terrorists to hide weapons, to hide guns, bombs. Um, they hide themselves and other terrorists there. But they also use it to store weapon, to store fuel, electricity, water that they steal from the people of Gaza. So when uh, humanitarian aid, usually before the war, uh, came into Gaza, Hamas would take this humanitarian aid for their own benefit, and they would not let the people of Gaza to use that humanitarian aid. Uh, we've seen this in a magnitude we have never seen before in this war. So basically all of the fuel that is inside Gaza is now almost completely being held by Hamas. They go up to these ho hospitals like Shifa hospital that is being used uh, by Hamas and they bring trucks. They take the fuel out of, out of the generators and the fuel tanks that these hospitals have fuel that is meant to be used to have uh, medical attention and to help those who are in need. They take that gas and that oil and that electricity and use it for their own terrorist means. So they take that fuel, for instance, and then they use it to fire rockets at Israel, uh, at Israeli civilians. So what we uncovered uh, several days ago, what the chief spokesperson of the IDF, Rear Admiral uh, Daniel Agari exposed is the entire compound of the Shifa hospital, which is a very big hospital, is completely covered in terrorist hotspots. So we have an entry point to a tunnel, we have generators, we have different uh, war command and control rooms for uh, Hamas, and you can see all of the evidence, the phone calls, and the aerial footage on our page. If you head on to our page, you can see visuals and conversations between Hamas operatives and leaders uh, of the energy uh, ministry of, uh, of Gaza. When talking about ministries in Gaza, it is very important to note uh, that every ministry in Gaza is ruled by Hamas. So the health ministry, for say, what, that publishes numbers of uh, people injured or killed by uh, the war, it's very important to understand that these numbers come directly from Hamas. Hamas manip manipulate this, these numbers in order to get the public uh, to be angry. And justifiably so, there's a lot to be angry at. But the anger of the world needs to be pointed at Hamas. 
Hamas are the ones that are using the Palestinians, that are using the Gazans uh, as human shields. They are putting themselves behind the people of Gaza. And they then publish fake numbers, they fake deaths. Uh, so it's very important to know when you read information about the Ministry of Health or the Ministry of Finance or the Ministry of Transportation, these are actually Hamas numbers, uh, which is very important to note. Um, another thing I want to talk about is the IDF's ground operations inside Gaza that have been expanding. Uh, in recent days. So we have more troops that are operating inside Gaza in different locations. They're having, they're, uh, there's extensive fighting going on between Hamas operatives and the IDF soldiers. Unfortunately, uh, this morning there was an RPG that hit an IDF vehicle um, that was loaded with soldiers. And unfortunately, all of the soldiers, almost all of the soldiers uh, killed, were killed and died in battle. 11 soldiers from the Givati Brigade. Uh, it's a tragic, tragic event. And uh, Hamas basically fired an RPG at a vehicle that was driving um, and it exploded, which caused the death of these soldiers. When we uh, are doing our ground operations inside Gaza, the target of these operations is to find the Hamas terrorists that are hiding inside Gaza. So our troops are doing the best that they can to minimize civilian casualties and civilian damage, which, was, which is why they're operating in a very precise way. So the way our strikes are happening is that you have troops on the ground, uh, armored vehicles, tanks, and combat soldiers that are accompanied by aerial support. So if the troops on the ground see something, they see a terrorist or they see some sort of infrastructure, they can direct their aerial force, the IDF's aerial force, to attack from above and give them cover. Uh, so if you have a force on the ground that is seeing a terrorist squad right in front of them, they are able to direct the, the, the helicopters and the aerial support to basically strike these terrorists as well in order to minimize unarmed uh, casualties, Gazan casualties, but also minimize the, the casualties to our side, to the IDF. Um, Hamas is still using Gazans as human shields. They are still trying to uh, thwart Gazans' attempts to go southern, to, to go to southern Gaza. And southern Gaza is a safer zone because the IDF is focusing its efforts at this moment on northern Gaza, which are where main of the Hamas strongholds are. We're also highly encouraging uh, the Gazan people and we're doing it in a plethora of ways. Just to name a few, we have uh, pages of the official IDF accounts in Arabic um, that we have messages going directly to the people of Gaza trying to urge them to go south, to go to the humanitarian zone in, Khan, in uh, northern Khan Yunus, uh, a zone called the Muasi. We are also dropping pamphlets uh, that says that say in basic Arabic with a map, with an illustration, where the humanitarian zone is, where is this safer zone so they can go there. We've also using uh, our ISA, what is called the Shin Bet and the and the special units in the intelligence directorate. We make phone calls to the people of Gaza who have yet to evacuate to explain to them uh, where they need to go, where is the safer zone, where is the zone they can get humanitarian aid. Speaking of humanitarian aid, it's very important to note that in recent days, there are dozens of trucks coming in from Rafah, from the crossing between Egypt and Gaza. Humanitarian aid that is coming in to, to these uh, humanitarian zone in Muasi, in the Muasi area. There, so there's about 200 million liters of water coming into Gaza every single day. Medical supplies and food that are coming in through Rafah, following a check from both the Egyptians and also from the from the Israeli side, and there's a lot of humanitarian aid that is coming into Gaza into those designated humanitarian zones. Uh, something that the IDF has been very clear about is that we will not allow humanitarian aid to go to Gaza. So if we see Hamas trying to get their hands on the humanitarian aid meant for the people of Gaza, we will strike and make sure that that humanitarian aid does not get 
to uh, Hamas's hands. What is also uh, important to note is that the IDF is acting based on very precise intelligence. So we've managed to actually eliminate a lot of Hamas leaders, a lot of their aerial uh, array leaders, those who masterminded the plans of where to strike, where to fire rockets, how to shoot at as many innocent uh, populations as well. Um, we also had a very happy event, a very joyous event. Our forces that are operating inside Gaza were able to rescue one of the hostages they rescued a soldier that was being held captive inside gaza she was kidnapped on october 7th and our soldiers were able to actually rescue her and bring her back home and she's now reunited with her family and with her friends and she's uh she's now in a safe place and we are very very hopeful and doing our absolute best to make sure that the rest of the hostages are also reunited with their families as soon as possible um, what I also want to say, we've been seeing uh, a lot of uh, reports about using white phosphorus. So the IDF does not use white phos phosphorus in a way that is against international law. We do not strike with white phosphorus in, uh, in Gaza in a way that is against international law. And it's very important to note. Um, I want to share with you something. I want to show you something uh, that our forces base were able to get back from Beiri, one of the commu one of the first communities who suffered the most losses on October seventh, when Hamas terrorists invaded uh, Israel and massacred fifteen hundred people. So this is a teddy bear uh, that was found in the beds of one of the little kids um, that were massacred in the community of Beiri. It was lying in the bed of a girl um, and it was rescued by our soldiers. They fired indiscriminately at children who were in their beds, uh, kids who were cuddling with their stuffed animals, uh, just trying to get some sleep on a Saturday morning with their families and with their uh, friends. Uh, they killed everyone. They killed without notice um, at all. They tried to murder as many people as possible. If you head over to our page, you can see a conversation uh, that a Hamas terrorist said that they were instructed simply to kill. Uh, they were instructed to kill anything and anyone. And he tells in detail that they fired at a safe room for, of a family because they heard child uh, children, uh, children cry inside the safe room because they were scared. So what they did, they fired at the bomb shelter, at the, at the safe room, until they could no longer hear the cries of the babies being scared for their lives. Uh, and that just shows you how inhumane, how barbaric um, Hamas terrorists are. And it's absolutely horrible. And as I said before, we're still trying to identify all of the bodies because Hamas terrorists muted, mutilated the bodies uh, beyond control. So I, a lot of people ask me and reach out and ask how they can help uh, combat and uh, the Hamas narrative and the Hamas lies. So our, my biggest thing to you is do your research. If you see something that doesn't add up, check out more resources, share our content, uh, share other media outlets content, but also be responsible in the media you're consuming. If you see something that looks very weird to you, if you see something that doesn't add up, uh, if something says a Hamas source says, or if you see something that says Hamas Ministry of Health, uh, please, please be aware that these are not legitimate information. The, these are not legitimate numbers. They are numbers that are being um, manipulated by Hamas in order to serve their own narrative. So I urge all of you, all of those who are interested in learning about the war between Gaza and, Ham Gaza and uh, between Hamas and Israel to head over to our pages. You can see a lot of content there. I will also try and do more lives. We'll bring other people who can also share the information that is happening here. Uh, thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you all again soon.